everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to make chicken parmesan. I am going to show you how to make those chicken breasts nice and thin. And then I'm also going to show you the three part breading process, which is pretty much the most important part of chicken parmesan because it's that nice crunchy crust on the outside of the chicken. Um, I'm also going to show you how to make a really nice, simple, straightforward, no fuss kind of tomato sauce. And lastly, to top it off, the right mozzarella cheese to use, in my opinion. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What I have here are two boneless, skinless chicken breasts, but as you see, they're pretty thick, all right? So the first step is to get them nice and thin. And the way that I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna put one chicken breast inside of a Ziploc bag. If you don't have any Ziploc bags, feel free to use Saran Wrap. Then I'm going to use this uh, kitchen mallet. If you don't have one of these, you can use the bottom of a heavy bottom uh, saucepan. What you want to do is you want to start pounding sort of in a motion that's either towards you or away from you. Okay, You don't want to just pound straight down. That's not going to flatten this, the chicken. If anything, that might just bruise it and break it. Patted this down to about a quarter inch in thickness. I think we're ready. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. See how thin that is? It's really thin and flimsy. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that with the other breast. I'm just going to go ahead and put these to the side. But before we do so, I want to make sure that I season my chicken breast with salt and pepper. And now I'm going to show you the three-part breading process, which is going to be, for two chicken breasts, I would use about, I don't know, let's say half a cup of white flour, two eggs, slightly beat together. And lastly, about a half a cup of grated Parmesan. And I'm using panko breadcrumbs. Now I like to use panko breadcrumbs because they're actually a bit crispier than your regular traditional breadcrumbs, but feel free to use traditional breadcrumbs if that's what you have. And I'm going to use about a half a cup of that. And then I'm just gonna use my hands to mix it all together. And now I'm going to season both the flour and the breadcrumbs. Since that's the outer layer of the chicken, you want to make sure that it has some flavor. So I'm just going to use a bit of salt, a couple of dashes, some black pepper, and just on the uh, Parmesan cheese and breadcrumb mixture, I'm going to use some smoked paprika. Yum. I used about two to three teaspoons. Okay, now starting with the flour, I'm going to take my chicken breasts and coat both sides. Make sure you get both sides here, okay, that they're evenly coated with flour. Then I'm going to take that into the egg wash or the egg mixture rather and again get, get both sides. Now the egg and the flour, they sort of create this bind for the breadcrumbs to stick to the chicken. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to drop the chicken. I'm just going to strain it a little bit, get some of the excess egg wash off, and then put it right into this mixture. And again, get both sides. Don't be afraid to do it a couple times. Shake the excess off. I'm just going to lay it down. I'm not going to let this sit too long now because I don't want there to be too much moisture between the chicken and the breading because then when you go to fry it, it actually separates. So we're going to go through this rather quickly now.
Okay, so while I wait for my pan to get nice and hot, remember you want to wait for your pan, <coughs> excuse me, to get nice and hot before you add the oil. The oil is the last thing you add right before you add your food, okay? That helps your food to not stick to the pan. Um, so what I've done here is I have um, a can of organic diced no salt added tomatoes. I got these from Trader Joe's. I put those into a pan um, and I'm using again my little shortcuts here. I love these things. Um, I'm using this is the, uh, the crushed garlic that comes in these nice little ice cube trays. Again, if you have fresh garlic, feel free to chop it up. Essentially, one cube equals one clove. So I'm going to use two cloves of garlic. And then I'm going to use about two cubes of basil. And one cube equals one teaspoon. Okay, so two cubes of basil. And then I'm going to put that on my stove top to simmer while I cook the chicken. And I am going to add the oil and you will see that right away it starts to smoke. I'm adding about two to three tablespoons of oil. I'm going to take my chicken breast. Now I'm going to do one at a time. I do not want to crowd the pan. Uh, first of all, they're really big and if you crowd them, that may mess with the temperature and how the breading sticks to the chicken. So I'm just going to do one at a time. I'm not going to mess with it. You're actually going to be able to see when the sides start to brown, that's your cue to flip them over. I'm actually going to turn off the heat and there is a little bit of oil in here, which is fine. No worries. I'm just going to go grab the tomatoes off the uh, off the stove and they've essentially reduced down by about half. Mmm, that smells really, really good. I'm just going to put that in the pan. And I'm combining the tomatoes with a little bit of oil that was left in the pan because that has a lot of the flavor from the chicken that was just cooking in it. I'm going to mix that up. Then I'm going to take my chicken breasts and place them right on top. Okay. Now for the final ingredient, the mozzarella. So to me, the best mozzarella that I love to use in chicken parmesan is this Ovaline. It's a, it's a whole milk mozzarella, and I get this also at Trader Joe's. I swear they should pay me for, for advertising for them. But essentially, um, as you can see here, it's essentially a whole milk fresh mozzarella, and it's actually really, really soft, and it melts really well. And it just... It doesn't have a very strong flavor, which I like. I like finding it there. I like the texture of it, but it's not very strong. I'm just going to cut off a couple of medallions. Place it right on top of the chicken parm. And now I'm going to put this in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes until that cheese melts. It's going to be really, really good. The cheese is completely melted over the chicken. The sauce is bubbling. I can smell the garlic. Remember those garlic cubes and the basil cubes? I can totally smell it. The house smells incredible. And this is just the way that I like it. Now, you may choose to put the sauce and the cheese on top of the chicken, but I like to do it this way because it preserves the crispiness of the outer crust. I'm gonna put my chicken cutlet right on the plate. The cheese is really melted. I'm just going to spoon some of the sauce. And now for my favorite part. Mm. Mm. The mozzarella melted just right. The outer crust of that chicken is still nice and crispy. It tastes so good. I can taste the garlic and the basil and the tomatoes. It's perfectly seasoned. And again, remember my secret ingredient, that paprika gives it just a hint of smokiness. And it's just exactly what I love in my chicken farm. Mmm.